Hi everybody, so this is my first video and basically I ran a poll on the Instagram page and I asked you guys what topic did you want for me to talk about and uh, the results for the poll was that, hold on, let me see if I can bring it up here. Um, what I was able to screenshot was that 67% of you guys said that you wanted um, you to start doing videos on how to make money as an influencer and 55 of you guys said that um, you wanted the one where I would teach you guys how to get sales on Instagram. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do videos on both topics. And then we'll just take it from there. So today I'm going to talk about the responsibilities that influencers have and how um, as an influencer, you basically have a responsibility to ensure that um, the products and the services that you're going to promote, it does not um, do harm to, you know, your audience. So we're just going to jump right into it. So for me personally, an influencer is like an authority figure. This person basically has the ability to persuade whether I want to be a small group of people or a large group of people, but basically to persuade people to do something, whether it's to buy a product, to buy a service, to get the latest hair care, um, curling custard or skincare or soap or whatever. If you are able to persuade people, you have a level of influence. Now, influence comes in different levels. Um, in the influencer industry, you have like a micro influencer and that's basically the smallest level where you're able, even though your following is small, say for example, you have like 30,000 or you have like 50,000 or even 10,000 followers, whether it wants to be on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook, whatever platform, the fact that from the fact that you're able to reach a vast majority of people with your small um channel or following um through your reach and through your impression it means that you're a micro influencer and micro influencers are very important okay in this game so as i was saying before being an influencer it comes with a lot of responsibility right um and one thing that I've noticed over the years, because I've been doing Kinky Miracle for four years now, I mainly post memes and videos on my Instagram page. And I really wanted to change the direction from just posting memes and videos to something that I personally find more impactful. I really want to like help people build brands online, build businesses, help them to build personal brands, help them how to make money and so forth. So this is why I'm really like going into this area, but not to stray. Um, when it comes down to being an influencer, many things that I, many things that I see is that people, they basically just do something for a check, right? And personally, I'm not cool with that. I'm not saying that um, you're not supposed to try to eat or you're not supposed to try to feed your family. I understand that. However, not all money is good money, okay? And for example, if you have a particular brand and the brand is putting up a false image or they're claiming to support a specific group and really and truly um, the facade or the image that they're putting up versus their actions is completely different and they reach out to you. I think that as an influencer, before you even take up this deal it's best if you weigh the pros and the cons of taking up such a deal for example say you have a brand and they're like okay we're all vegan right and uh, they're natural and friendly and for the earth you know those brands who, who they're all about eco-friendly and those things right say they reach out to you and they're like, hey, can you promote this product for us? 
Now, even though the image that the brand is selling is about being naturally natural and good for the environment, that's just the facade. It's your due diligence as an influencer to see, like, to research and to see if they're really keeping up with what they're saying. Because and it's it's very simple to do this. You can look up articles. You could ask a few people around the com your community, whether it's online, um, or people who you just know and ask them if they know about this brand, what they've heard about this brand, um, and uh, basically see if they're living up to your word because. The brands that you associate yourself with as an influencer is going to make or break you because if that brand does something that is controversial and you're associated with that brand, it's going to look bad on you. People are going to look on you sideways and then it's going to tarnish your personal image, your personal brand. People are going to start questioning you and then you're going to look money hungry. And we don't want that. I don't want that for you. You shouldn't even want that for yourself. So that's one thing, right? And another thing that I'm sick and I'm tired of is uh, when influencers push down product down my throat. That's another thing that um I I, I want to talk about real quick. As an influencer, I would basically say to you guys it's more about quality than quantity when it comes to promoting other brands because if you you have to remember no you know you are your own personal brand and you're making money through collaborations that's one way you're going to make money through collaborating with other brands around you now if every minute um your fans your audience they're seeing or every day they're seeing like a new sponsored post from a different brand. It's going to be very, it's, it's, it's just not a good look, okay? People are going to be turned off by it and it's not a good look on your behalf because people that will come to your channel to learn about I don't know, to learn about skincare and then you're here promoting a video game. No. People that'll come to your channel to learn about fashion and you're here promoting, uh, I don't know, just something that isn't even related to your content or to your posts. Just ensure that whatever brand that you decide to promote, it goes aligned with not only your morals and your beliefs, but also um, the content that you're making, right? Because it's gonna look very spammy when you have every single video, every single day, you have some sponsored posts. Unless you do like some YouTubers that I see out here, for example, um, what's that guy's name? His name is Logordia Cross. Whenever he has like a sponsorship deal, like for, for, for example, probably Clorox, or um some other brands what i admire about him is that he tries or he finds a way to you know uniquely incorporate the product into whether it's a script or acting or whatever video that he's doing like he doesn't just jump up and say okay buy clorox like no like he does something creative and he puts it in his video and it doesn't even seem like an ad like the best ads are ads that don't even feel like ads but when every single video you have three products promoting five products promoting and before like people can even get to the content the first thing you talk about is okay guys before you even go here let me just remind you of my code for this this is no it, it becomes annoying so quality over quantity when it comes on to sponsorship deals okay that's 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 something i also recommend when it comes down to like social responsibility for the in for 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 the influencer yeah um and basically like my final thought is that any brand that you're going to decide to work with you need to ensure that this brand it, it's suitable for your audience type because if for example you become an influencer and then your brand is children. 
right? Not brand. And then your audience are kids. Certain products just cannot be promoted to kids, right? I, I don't have to go into details in what is appropriate and what is not appropriate, right? But you have to be mindful that, hey, you are an influencer. You have the ability to persuade people. And, you know, this is a pet peeve of mine where, like, I see influencers, they're always like, oh, well, ensure that you, you guard what your kids watch. Blah, blah. Yes, I do agree that as a parent, you're supposed to monitor your child to ensure that what they're watching is safe for them. However, as an influencer, if you know that a specific age group is watching you, and that includes kids, you need to be mindful of what you put out there because what you put out there can either positively or negatively impress or have an impression on the life of a child that can have effects in the long term and that's going to be on you it's not um feasible 100 percent of the time for a parent to monitor their child 24 7. Kids are, kids are so smart these days. Kids are sneaky these days, right? And so while, like, the parent might think that, okay, they have everything under control, they're monitoring their child, yada, 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 kids always find new ways to hide stuff from their parents. Just be mindful of your audience and ensure that you're able to to cater to them okay these are just my thoughts on influencers and the responsibilities that influencers have don't forget to like and subscribe leave your comments down below do you think that influencers should be responsible for what they post let me know if you agree or disagree let me know what other 